Hey, hey everyone, Carlopix here. And today I thought I would do a little bit of beaded cross stitch with you guys. So, um, welcome. And if the video looks a little bit weird, that is because I'm recording with my phone this time instead of my webcam. Um, because of that, you know, crazy, horrible glitch that I get sometimes. Um, it just would not quit when trying to film this. So I have switched and yeah, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. So this is what I originally wanted to do with you guys. Um, I wanted to do this one because the beads are larger. The fabric is a larger count. And I just thought it would be easier to see on camera and easier to do. So um, I will not be doing this one. And here's why. Uh, now this I got with, a, I did a video for double-sided pearl embroidery. And in that video, I ranted about how horrible the beads were and the actual technique, which gave you this kind of, you know, dual-sided tapestry thing. Um, it wasn't the best technique. It was kind of frustrating and there are already so many better techniques out there to achieve the same result. So I figured I would give up on that double-sided embroidery and because it came with this Ada cloth, the printed Ada cloth, I figured I'd turn it into beaded cross stitch. So I did some of it um, because I wanted to get into some color parts to make it a little bit more interesting because as you can see here is like three rows of straight black one color. And you can also see that I have partial rows here um, because I wanted to try something new. Um, but yeah, uh, you can't even tell. Like this whole section here is actually three different colors. And yeah, it's pretty disappointing. This is a pretty ugly result. I'll get a little bit closer there, hopefully. I think it's pretty ugly. Um, I don't like the way that they're sitting. And I didn't particularly want to do an ugly project with you guys. So... We won't be doing this one. I'll just roll that back up <laughs> and not toss it in the garbage. I will complete it because I have paid so much money for it and I feel like I it, it can't be rubbish. I need to get my crafting time out of it. So that will be still a work in progress. This is what I will be working on today. I haven't accomplished too much since I last showed you guys but it's still coming along nicely. I am enjoying it and I did a couple of the partial rows here. Now just really quickly, the reason why I do partial rows is because, uh, well like the pattern's too big to fit on one sheet of paper, right? So instead of flipping between three sheets alone just to complete one row, I figured I would do one sheet. So that would be like this one section here and then I'd move on to the next section and complete that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, hopefully there won't be any, like a visible line in between the sections. Uh, but yeah, we'll see once I do the two sections. I will have to go back and fix it if there is and then go back to square one with how you're supposed to do it from there on. But yeah, that's that. Let's get to stitching. Let's turn this the right way for me. And yeah. Easy stuff, easy stuff. You just need to see where I am. Okay, so has I know a few people have mentioned that they have gotten their um, beaded embroidery kits or beaded cross stitch kits, I should say. Um, what did you get? If you have gotten it, what did you get? Or if you haven't gotten it, which one do you want to get? <laughs> I'm very curious, especially when it's something that is a new craft to me. I'm very curious to see what other people um, pick for theirs. And, you know, hopefully it gives me a bit of inf inspiration. Like I hope these videos have been giving you. Um, but yeah, I'm very curious. Did you get like maybe a partial? Or did you get a full like this one? Like what do you, what did you get? What do you want to get? <laughs> There's some really pretty partials out there, but I think the partials really only look good if um, the background is plain, like untouched, instead of the painted backgrounds. Oh, I can't even see this. Get in there. Okay. Um, some of the backgrounds are painted on, but you don't sew beads onto them. So I'm not too fond of those. 
Um, I do like it if it's just the plain fabric that they use as the background. Those can be really pretty. So. I have been researching beaded cross stitch um, quite a bit lately. <laughs> There is uh, a long time ago, um, someone left a comment on one of my videos and left a link to a Russian site. And this Russian site for beat at cross stitch, it, the, the pieces that they have are incredible. They're so pretty, but they're just so expensive. And that's kind of a bit let down for me at the moment because, you know, with holidays coming up, most of your um, funds go to presents, I believe. So, you know, or hey, maybe I can get that as a present for myself. <laughs> but yeah, this site was incredible. It was really cool. And there's quite a few pieces that I want from this site. So maybe I'll just save up one day. Maybe I'll get it next year or something like that. And that AliExpress sale is coming up pretty soon. So you can put uh, a beaded cross stitch kit on your wish list. You can even pre-order it and get sale prices. It's really cool. But um, yeah, save some money there if you get a smaller cross stitch kit. Yeah, I'm trying my best. Like, I really want to lean over and put this really close to my face. <laughs> I would recommend getting some sort of cross-stitch frame. Um, this one's quite big, so it's really hard to find a frame for it. And I did find one on uh, Taobao. And, <laughs> yeah, it was really cheap and... It was a metal frame, so I was like, awesome, that will have no problem getting through customs, you know, in Australia, because customs, our customs are quite strict, and they don't really allow for wood um, to come in. So I was like, well, this is metal, so we'll completely bypass that problem. It's really cheap, and it's big enough. It's awesome. It was a floor floor frame, even, so it's, it stands. The height is adjustable. It was perfect. But I haven't received it yet. And it was ordered a very, very, very long time ago. So um, this was ordered on Taobao. And Taobao does not have an English site. So if you do not speak Chinese, it's very difficult to navigate. And even now, I'm trying to get some of my friends who speak Chinese to help me. Like, it's just, it's a nightmare. But that being said, there are a lot of third-party sites that you can order, like they act as a middleman if you want to order from Taobao. Like it's really cool. <laughs> Sorry, where am I? <laughs> um, so yeah, basically you find the link of the item that you want on Taobao and you plug that link into one of these third-party ordering sites and then you order it through them. Now, there are a lot of sites that charge a commission for ordering through them, or you have to pay a little bit more for the shipping to order through them. So I guess you could try a couple of different sites to see which ones give you the best results, but it's it's a little bit more expensive from ordering, but from ordering from Taobao direct, but it's a lot easier and you're a little bit more guaranteed to receive your product. So, and then things are so much cheaper on Taobao that I guess it's worth the, the little bit extra you're still saving, so. All right, this is gonna be, I'm not gonna accomplish much in this bead with me, guys. <laughs> my, my string is already getting short. So I'm going to put one more bead on here and then I'm going to have to change it out. I got some new needles. Um, it was kind of, I want to say uncultured with the way that I went about purchasing these needles. I um, 
because it needs to be very specific. Now, the beads in this kit are also not the best quality. They are not consistent in size or shape. So it's quite ridiculous. And I uh, just lost that. Okay. So the um the needle doesn't always the beads don't always go through onto the needle. Wait, how does that go? The needle doesn't always go through the bead. <laughs> there we go. So I had to make sure when I was shopping for new needles, because I only had one, and the needles that came with this this kit were way too small because they advise you to use three strands of embroidery floss, um, you know, for each pass. And that was way too small um, to fit three strands of embroidery floss. So I had one needle that did the trick and fit most of the beads, but uh, it was very short and I bent it up a little bit too much. And I was like, okay, I need new needles. Sorry, I'm just grabbing my embroidery thread. Yeah, so I needed new needles and um, I took some of the, in the store, I took some of the beads that I have the most problem with. <laughs> so I took some of those in like a little container and then I took, um, I took the needle that worked for me and then I actually took three strands of embroidery floss and that was, you know, to make sure that they would fit in the eye of the needle, that they could be threaded. So I took all of this in because I didn't want to purchase, you know, needles only to come home and find out that, you know, it doesn't work at all and then have to go back and do the same process over and over again. So I wanted to make sure that the needles were right in the store before I purchased them. And so here I am in the middle of the aisle with a pack of needles. Um, I thought they were like the closest to what I needed at that point um, because they kind of matched or were smaller in diameter of the needle um, that I was using that worked. So I took a needle out of the package. I ran some of the beads over the needle just to make sure that they all went through okay. They passed that test. And then I uh, threaded the needle with the embroidery floss. And these passed that test. So I'm standing there in the shop with a pack of needles setting up like a project, like I'm about to make something. And it was a little embarrassing standing there trying to do it. But I was like, you know, I'm on a mission. This is what I got to do. Just deal with it. And I found this pack of needles. So I haven't been working with them very long. So we'll see how that goes. They are a little bit more flimsy than what I like. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how that works. And it is still a little bit tight getting the embroidery floss through. There we go. And this little doohickey here, I don't know if you can really see that, um, is my needle threader. I go through heaps of needle threaders and they're not exactly the cheapest things to buy. So because I made beaded flowers, I had uh, some 32 gauge wire available, like left, like I wouldn't be using it for anything else. So I've just been using that to make my needle threaders. So if one breaks or if it gets too crimped or something like that, I can just chuck it and then quickly make a new one. All right, so that's all threaded and I am ready to get going again. Except I can't see where my needle is going. Okay, there we go. I was like, that's going to take some concentration, guys. Okay, so, and it's as easy as that um, to, to start and end a, a thread. You just, you're just tying knots. Really easy. Ugh. And then you just continue where you left off. Like, it's the easiest thing. You don't, you should tie knots. You don't need to run them under uh, previous stitches. You should definitely be tying knots. So, don't have to worry about that. Let's 
And yeah, it's not going too slowly for me not being able to see all that well. <laughs> I reckon I could actually get used to this. So, um, Yeah, this is pretty good. So no news on the, um, you know, property searching front. That's all I've got to say about that. This is still looking. <laughs> we did put in a bid on a place and it got rejected. The end. <laughs> Keep looking. So no news there. Um, Christmas. Yeah. I can't believe Christmas is coming up. So I won't. I probably won't be getting too much work done on this afterwards either. Like it'll be pretty slim and none, I think, um, because of Christmas coming up. But yeah, need to get working on these gifts. And uh, some people have posted in the group some of their presents that they're working on and it, they're just gorgeous. Diamond painting is so gorgeous. And it's like the sky is the limit with diamond painting. And you know, to be honest, sky is the limit with beaded embroidery as well. There are so many colors available. The only thing is, is that beaded cross stitch is a lot more expensive than diamond painting. I remember even when I first started diamond painting, my very first one was free technically. And I just had to pay for shipping, which was only five bucks. So my very first one, the waterfall, only $5 and that was pretty worth it. And these days with the sales and everything, you can get, you can still get $5 diamond paintings and have them be relatively good quality. <laughs> you have to be careful though. There are some pretty crappy places out there that just, you know, drop ship en masse, but, um, yeah, beaded cross stitch however is not as cheap i mean you can get some cheap pieces um but they are going to be very small and most likely partials but i think if you're just starting out that's more than okay right like you need to check to see if this is something that you want to invest your time effort and money into so fair enough you can buy uh beaded embroidery kits on aliexpress for like ten dollars so i think that's not too bad and to be honest the amount of crafting time you get out of a beaded cross stitch, I feel like it's worth the higher price point because this is, I will, this will take me longer to do than a diamond painting. So I feel that is a bit of value for money there. And the end result is completely different because people are like, well, you did a diamond painting of this one. Well, I did, but, um, it's going to look completely different in the end. It's going to have a completely different result, even though it's still like, you know, pixelated or pointillism type of craft, but it's going to have a completely, completely different end result. And I cannot wait to see that. So hopefully next, sometime next year, you guys, I'll have this, you know, completed and be able to compare. We'll see. My goodness by next year. I already feel like I'm going to fail that challenge. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else to, to kind of chat about. I'm not normally a chatty person, but uh, I feel like it's fun to chat with you guys while I do this. So I, I tend to ramble on, <laughs> but yeah, like that's coming along pretty good. I mean, you know, fluffing around, it can take a bit of time to do this, but to be honest, it goes pretty quick. And if you're watching like TV or something like that while you're doing this, before you know it, you're like moved on to the next row and you're like, Hey, got some progress done there pretty quickly. So. I still use the graph, even though it's got the pattern printed on here because I can't, get out of here, I can't really 
understand all of the symbols on the cloth. Like they're just too similar for me to be able to tell them apart and go only by the symbols on the cloth. So that's why I prefer to continue to use the graph. It's just too hard. Like there's a, like there's a tan color and a slightly oranger tan color. And there's a, what is it? There's a upside down V that's orange. And then there's an upside down V that's purple. And then there's a right side up V that's purple. And I'm like, I can't keep up with those. And the legend for the patterns that are on the um, fabric are on the other end <laughs> of the fabric. So I can't even access it without unrolling this whole piece. So yeah, sticking to the graph it is. But it does, like I was saying, it does go by a little bit quicker than you would think, especially after you've, you know, done it for a few rows and you know where all the symbols are located in your um, storage units. Because then, you know, you're like, okay, I need this color, it's over here. Or I need this color and it's over here. So pretty soon you're like, you know exactly where each color is. And that's a little bit quicker because then you don't have to search. And then when you get blocks of color, which happens uh, quite a bit, um, those go by quicker as well because, you know, you're like, well, I have to use the same color for the next 10 beads. Okay, easy, done. So it's not, it's not too bad. I'm enjoying it. It's actually quite fun. And it's just so easy. So easy. You're just doing half stitch all the way. And yeah, I'm loving it. Loving it so much. And every time I look at what I've completed, you know, at a distance, it just looks so gorgeous. Like it's this awesome jewel tone. And I just think it's phenomenal because you get this really cool, it's not rhinestone look per se, but it's got some depth to it, you know, it's got, you know, some texture to it. It's just really cool. I'm trying to sell this to you real hard. <laughs> now I'm, I just really enjoy um, beaded cross stitch now. And this has been around for some time. Actually, there's a company called Mill, Sim Mill, Mill Sims? No, not Mill Sims. Mill crap I'm so sorry I'll put it in the comment below what the correct name is but it's like mill beads or something like that anyways they have um, beads in some of their cross stitch kits but I think they're only for embellishments and not for you know to be done as a complete beaded cross stitch so mill hill oh crap I can't even remember I'm sorry anyways those projects are really nice, but yeah, the beads are just for embellishments, I believe. So um, this is a bit different than those kits that you get from them. Although that might be another good place to start. They're really pretty. But yeah, I think I am going to end this uh, here. I have been going for a little bit. And yeah, let's see. And also my thread needs to be um, untwisted as well, looks like. So I usually have to hold that up and let it, you know, untwist itself by spinning. Wow, this is really twisted. How did I let it get so twisted? Anyways, yeah, I usually hold it up and I'll let the needle dangle and it untwist itself. But yeah. Let's see the progress we've got. So we've done quite a bit there. Um, and that's with me jibber jabbering and gesturing and not actually doing some bead work the whole time. So yeah, not too bad. I hope this inspires you to do a bit of beaded cross stitch. It is a lot of fun and it just looks incredible. So yeah, I hope I have more to show you next time we do another um, beading together. <laughs> But yes, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you have purchased or are planning to purchase a bead across stitch and what you got. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!